Welcome to another Women Lead TV show where I have a guest today that is going to talk about being a brand and business strategist. Everything's about branding today. So I want to welcome to Women Lead TV, Jackie Juneau. She is the founder of J. Juneau Marketing and she is a brand and business strategist. So mm -hmm. welcome to the show and say hello to our audience. Thanks. Hi, everybody. It's good to be here. Thanks we, for having me, Michelle. I'm just delighted. You are a wealth of knowledge. I mean, first disclosure is that we've done business together. Yep. I love what you created for us, which was to help us refine our message, but you have such more talent mm -hmm. and expertise of what it takes to really build a successful business. Can you give me a little idea of what you see as the main trends right now for businesses with marketing? <laughs> Which I know we've talked about, but I want you to yeah. share what you shared with everyone. With me. I, I uh, yeah, we, we, we did talk a little bit of, about this, and um, <laughs> I, I guess I'm something of a contrarian in the marketing I love creative. that word, by the way, I love yeah. contrarians. <laughs> um, I don't really believe in trends. I, I mean, it's not that I don't believe in them, but I, I, I think business owners, you know, have a tendency to get carried away with trends yeah. and focus so much on what's new and what's hot and what is everybody else doing that they're not focusing on their business. They're not focusing mm. on the core of who they are and what makes them great. And, and then they just start, you know, that shiny object syndrome where they're just following one thing after another and they're never getting anywhere. Well, I want to talk a little bit about that because, you know, today everything is all about social media right. and everybody's chasing, you know, Facebook ads, mm -hmm. trying to find ROI online, mm -hmm. which I get it. You know, mm -hmm. we, we're doing some of that. But maybe, you know, for you, what are some of the things that a business owner should consider? I mean, I know we all mm -hmm. chase shiny light syndrome, mm -hmm. but as a business owner, how do you kind of evaluate and say, okay, stop, stop right, the nonsense, right, right. let's get back to basics. Right. What, what would that be? Well, you know, uh, part of the work that I do when I'm coaching clients is, and, and doing um, an evaluation like that is I come in and I assess everything that they're doing. Mm -hmm. And I mean, all of their online efforts, all of their offline efforts, I I, set, I, I take a deep dive into their client database. I look at their sales funnel. Are we talking their underwear? I mean, you get into their underwear <laughs> drawers? Kind of, right? You know, and we really talk oh, about what, who they are as a business, where they want to go. I talk to the staff. I talk to their clients. Oh, my gosh. To really get a good picture of, one, what is making them successful? What is making the clients come to them in the first place? Because you don't want to mess with that, right? right? That, you want that's the secret sure sauce, that's right? That's the secret sauce. Yeah. You want to keep that. But, but two, and the thing that I have found most interesting is most clients, you don't know what you don't know, right? Yeah, that's true. As a business, and, absolutely. Right. And, and most clients, they don't even know where the bottlenecks are. Are or what they're missing. I, I had mm -hmm. one client who wanted to start doing a newsletter, mm -hmm. you know, a, a quarterly. Like old school or well, email well, newsletter? An, I've email, seen, an email newsletter. Okay. When I say newsletter, it's always email. No, but I've seen people yeah. go back to the old paper right, version right. now, you know, right? Old school. So he wanted Real. to do an email newsletter to okay. his clients, and I evaluated his database. Uh oh. He only had email addresses for 40% of his clients. Wow. He had no yeah. idea. And so that's what I I mean with following trends. You get so focused on doing Facebook or Instagram or you know whatever it is that you don't take the time to step back and really know what it is that you have or don't have. And sometimes the 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 fix, you know, the thing that I'm recommending mm -hmm. isn't actually spending money on third-party platforms. Okay. It's let's create a better sales funnel. Let's set up a lead tracker, and here are the things that you need to find out from every single prospect hmm. who calls you, emails you, you know, what have you. That's where you, you know, sometimes it's just about improving the sales process, and it's not even about, you know, more. Those are pretty good because I do think. I mean, again, every business we have, we have uh, ugly, mm -hmm. ugly children. Let me put it that way. <laughs> we all have ugly children in our business, and I think you know we're so involved in it mm -hmm. that we can't have that. 
I guess, objective Obj through right. the forest mm -hmm. kind of viewpoint, and that's what mm -hmm. you do. I'm really curious, how did, you know, for you, what's your background? I mean, how the heck did you get into being like this marketing whisperer, which I don't know what <laughs> your, ti I know your title is a guru, but I'm like, how, you, you have a very unique talent in just uncovering things. That was yeah. my experience. But how did you even get into this and tell a little bit, you well, know, of our attendees what I, your background was? I mean, I started in marketing and, uh, oh, well, yeah, that I, explains I started it. in marketing. Old I, I actually school. started Old in school. advertising. I was a media planner. So I was the person who would decide uh, what media we would use for our advertisers and how much of it. So whether it was radio or TV or billboards and what billboards I would ride around, you know, go to towns and drive around. Did you really around. drive around? Oh yeah, you went on scouts oh, and you had gosh. to, you know, evaluate every billboard. Yeah. So I actually started there and then I moved to what's called client side uh, and was the marketing manager, the marketing director mm -hmm. for, um, for various companies. And Did you have a specialty, like mostly retail? No, I, Was it all kinds of businesses? Or? Uh, several different kinds of businesses. Okay. The, the, uh, the last of them were more in the real estate oh, arena. Okay. Yes, okay. right when real estate crashed, it was fun. Is that when you were there? Oh my yeah. gosh. <laughs> I'm going to come back with a question on that. What was that like? Yeah. yeah. Um, and, uh, and then I moved to the world of consulting and was this by choice or was it that you were in transition or well, it is this was, what you wanted? It was, I mean, I was in transition and somebody needed some help. And so I started helping them and all of a sudden I went, oh, this is what I'm supposed right. to be doing. Um, and, and I think because it is that, I guess it's an intuition mm -hmm. that I have. Um, well, when I when I worked with bigger companies, I was I I was what was known as a marketing generalist. Okay. At the time, it was just marketing because if you were in marketing, you did everything that needed to be the done. Big bucket, yeah. Right. Yeah. And now we have all these fancy terms for you know a community manager and you know digital you know whatever. And hey, before marketing, there was advertising. That's the big bucket. The IRS well, still calls it advertising. Actually, before advertising, there was marketing. There was always marketing and okay, ad, well, but that's, that's a whole new. other conversation. Now we've gone way <laughs> to the early years. Yeah. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah. But yeah. So. Um, so yeah, so I was a generalist, so I did everything. Okay. And so that translated really well to working with business owners, mm -hmm. but I, I, I also have an innate or insatiable need to know and to you're, understand. You're like Curious George. I'm, I'm like Curious George. <laughs> so I want to know who are these people and okay. how does their business operate? And I have a, I. And I understand because I've also started a woodworking business at one point, but Whoa. yeah, um, that I understand that as a business owner, especially when you're a smaller business, mm -hmm. who you are as a as an owner, who your team are as individuals, right. greatly impacts what you can do in your company. Good or bad. Good or bad. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. Good and point. So you know, sometimes it's a matter of you know, y you've got somebody on your team who loves tweeting, who's tweeting all day. Well, they're going to double as your social media manager, right? But if you hate writing and you need to be blogging and you need to be writing, but you cannot, for the life of you, sit down and write anything but it's important mm -hmm. to the success mm -hmm. of your business, then that's something we're going, I'm going to recommend you outsource. But here's a question, and this is what I think is so frustrating. I'm gonna go from my mm -hmm. experience, right? So, so what I see so much right now is business owners that are solely focused, like I gotta create content. Mm -hmm. And there's this like epic level of mm -hmm. stress that goes on. Mm -hmm. And I see businesses that go, okay, I don't wanna do my social media, I wanna have somebody mm -hmm. else do it. And the hardest thing for what I see with a lot of thought leaders mm -hmm. or business owners is how to get somebody to write for you. Mm -hmm. When you've built the business, you are the business, you're looking to build an enterprise, what would be maybe some suggestions you have? Like, is it always about hiring somebody else or do we as owners need to get over ourselves and focus on content development? You, you need to get over we yourself. We have to do it ourselves? You have to do, oh. you have to do some of it yourself. Okay. Okay. Um, 
There's an 80-20 rule in social media. 80% of what you do should be sharing other people's content. 80%? 80%. Okay. 20% should be about self-promotion. Uh, so I can do that. Yes. Yeah, so, so what you can have an intern or hiring somebody else to do are those retweets or just posting your articles. Okay. Doing, doing the stuff that doesn't have a lot of personality to okay. it. But social media is a great tool for building relationships. Right. And as a business owner, as a thought leader, you absolutely have to be the one to do that. Can I, see, I tell you, all of the listeners and the audience are just going, oh, really? Well, think this, about it this tough. way. It's tough, yeah. If there is a prospect, somebody that you've really been trying to land, mm -hmm. and you get a meeting with them, would you send a staff member? Would you send an intern to that meeting, or would you go yourself? No. If it's a big potential client, of course, I'd go myself. So you need to have that mindset when it right. comes to social media, to engaging in social media. So if you're commenting on somebody else's post, mm -hmm. it needs to be you commenting. If you're reaching out directly to somebody, you need to be the one doing it. Um, again, there are some things that can be automated. There are some things that you definitely can have somebody else handle. You need to trust that person. Wow. You need to monitor them. Um, I have heard horror stories and people who have lost clients because they have it was farmed out wow. the social media yeah. and that person who they hired was inappropriate. Cause that that just stops me on so many levels, right? That it yeah. is that because you do because you have to get in there and look at it. What else, you know, for you? I, I would say, is there a client relationship that you kind of got in there, looked at the forest through the trees, mm -hmm. and you can kind of share about some of the steps you worked on with them? That the end result was, you know, they really had a different perspective. Mm -hmm. They got different results. Do you have like a client? I know you've got many. Yeah. Um, but share one if you don't mind, without of course saying who it was, unless uh, you want course. to. No. Shout out. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I have one client um, who we went through a discovery process. I, I worked on a full branding project okay. with him and did a branded a full, business strategist. Yeah, and, and, and did a full strategy. Okay. And part of the process that I use is doing a, it, it's a discovery process, and I interview my clients. Clients. I've been through it. Yeah, went through it. <laughs> and that was tough. The, it, it came out that there was one service that he really believed in, but it was always uncomfortable for him, and he felt like he was sort of you know, pushing and hitting his head against a wall of getting buy-in from his clients to do that. And every single one of them said they didn't want to do that. That powerful of yes. feedback. So that made that, a total that, shift. It, yeah made a total right. shift and and you know one aspect was of that was oh okay well this is it. and I mean at one point he said I'm not going to focus on that it the, a burden has been lifted this is amazing right um, but it also opened up through you know other conversations that their the value of that work is very vital to the work he does mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it enabled us to look at it and say, how do we shift that work so it becomes more of an organic part of the process and not something that's cumbersome and overwhelming for his clients? See, I, think, I love that, those words right there just because we, I think all of us as owners of small businesses mm -hmm. are overwhelmed right. every day, right? There's never right. enough time, resources, mm -hmm. or money, right? But I think what I love with you, what you helped us with the perspective mm -hmm. of was the, when the message changed, mm -hmm. the results changed, right? right? And, mm -hmm. and I saw it, I felt it, and there were results mm -hmm. from it. So that's my kudos to you. Thank just you. to know that we <laughs> changed and shifted and pivoted for our association just mm -hmm. with the words we used. I right. mean, it really captured words for when- matter. Yeah, Words, words matter. Words matter. Words matter. I love it. Can you share maybe two things that you see business owners do that maybe keep this in mind and do this differently? Just two slices mm. of advice, because we're almost out of time. Two slices and we'll have of you advice. Back, by the way. One is have a plan. Uh, it, the four-letter word. I know, it's the a four-letter four word. word. And, and I'm telling you, I guess the old school vision of a strategic marketing plan mm -hmm. 
get that out of your head. Throw it out. Okay, okay. throw it out. Not okay. every company needs a 20 plus page strategic <laughs> document. I remember right? those. Yes. yes, okay. That That's overwhelming. And, and I I learned that lesson, you know, the hard way that that's overwhelming for a lot of business yeah. owners. But you still need to have a plan, even if it's on a cocktail nap napkin, okay? You cannot- Post-it note? Can it be on a post-it note? I don't know if you can fit it on a post-it note. They have big ones now. But they let's big talk ones. about, you know, yeah. cocktail napkin. You need to know where you're going. Yeah. Not tomorrow and not next week. Where do you want to be in two years from now, in five years from now, in 10 years from now? Because that answer is going to inform the decisions you make today. Bam. That's our show for today on Women Lead TV. <laughs> Jackie, thank you for being our leading lady. Oh my gosh, we'll have you back. To all of our attendees and our audience, it's like we will see you back on another Women Lead TV series soon.